हेलो एवरी वन टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी जियोग्राफी ऑफ क्लास नाइन द बुक विच आई एम रेफरिंग इज गोयल पब्लिशर्स एंड द ऑथर इज वीना वार्गवा द फर्स्ट यूनिट इज आर वर्ल्ड एंड द नेम ऑफ द चैप्टर इज अर्थ एज ए प्लैनेट आवर अर्थ इट इज अ वेरी स्मॉल प्लैनेट इन द वास्टनेस ऑफ स्पेस इट इज the third of the eight planets of our solar system it is the only planet known to have a life earlier we had nine planets and pluto was excluded from the planetary system since 2006 because it was considered to be a dwarf planet let us now consider from our way up that is the galaxy to earth in total in the vastness of space we can see more than 100 trillion galaxies out of that galaxies there is our milky way and do you know in our milky way there are around 400 billion stars out of the 400 billion stars one of is sun sun is not the largest one of those stars even and sun which is the center of the of our our solar system so the solar system consists of the sun at the center and eight major planets their satellites and countless minor planets or asteroids orbiting around the sun the eight planets in order of the distance from the sun are mercury venus earth mars jupiter saturn uranus and neptune earth is the third planet from the sun the densest planet in the solar system and the largest of the solar system's four terrestrial planets it is the fifth largest planet in the solar family it is also one of the most beautiful planets and appears from distant space as a small greenish blue marble like sphere with its blue oceans and sparkling polar ice caps the earth is also referred to as blue planet because of the abundance of water on the planet producing a vivid blue color when viewed from space now let's read about the realms of the earth or the earth's spheres the earth is composed of three main parts lithosphere hydrosphere and the atmosphere the lithosphere is a solid crust of rocks on the surface of the earth on which we live the main part of the crust consists of igneous rocks and the rest consists of sedimentary and metamorphic rocks the second part is hydrosphere the earth has been named blue planet or watery planet as it contains 71% of the water on its surface and 29% on land the earth is the only planet in the solar system with abundant water on its surface essential for the existence of life the water exists in three forms on the earth that is in solid liquid and gaseous form oceans not only moderate the temperatures of the, to a large extent they also help in setting up the water circulation system called the water cycle the third realm is the atmosphere it is the envelope of air surrounding the earth air it is a colorless tasteless and odorless substance and is mobile elastic and compressible the most interesting fact is that we do not feel its presence unless there is horizontal motion in it air in horizontal motion is known as wind the earth's atmosphere extending up to 1600 km around contains 21% oxygen 78% nitrogen and traces of carbon dioxide 1% argon and other gases along with water vapor atmosphere acts like a blanket of air protecting us from the harmful ultraviolet rays of the sun and retains the heat radiated from the earth's surface and we live in a sphere called biosphere biosphere is such a sphere in which atmosphere hydrosphere and lithosphere are there it is actually a combination of all the three spheres which uh, 
provides us with the important and essential conditions to live. Now let's talk about the shape and the size of the earth. Earlier people believed that earth shape was like a flat table and they thought if they reach that steep edge of the table they would slip down into the ocean. In 1519, during Ferdinand Magellan's round the world expedition, it was proved beyond doubt that earth is round in shape. After a lot of studies, considerations, expeditions and experiments, it was proved that the earth only appears to be a perfect sphere but it is not. The measurements of the earth at its equator and poles show that it has a slight bulge at the equator while it is slightly flattened at the poles. Thus, the word used to describe the shape of the earth is oblate spheroid. Our earth is also known as a geoid shaped, which means earth shaped. Let's now discuss the proofs of the Earth's shape. After carefully experimenting and observing the Earth's shape, we came after 8 proofs which uh, tell us that the Earth is spherical in shape. The first one is all celestial bodies are spherical. Spheres are the only geometrical shapes that are circular in outline. The sun, moon and all other celestial bodies appear to have a circular outline. Since earth too belongs to the same system, there is no reason why earth should be an exception. Second one, circumnavigation of the earth. Time and again, people traveling around the world in different directions come back to the starting point. The third one is the line of visibility increases with height. An observer, when standing on a cliff, sees first the mast of the approaching ship, then its funnel and lastly the hull. If earth were flat, he would have seen the whole ship at once. The fourth point being the sunrise and the sunset. Suppose if earth were flat, the sun would rise and set at the same time for all the people in the world. But the time varies all over the world. This is due to the round shape of the earth. The fifth reason is the circularity of the horizon. As viewed from the deck of a ship, the horizon appears to be circular in shape. The sixth reason is the earth's surface is curved. Surveyors while driving poles of the same size into the ground would find the central pole projecting slightly above the other two due to the curvature of the earth. If the earth were flat at all the poles would have the same horizontal level. This experiment is known as the Bedford level experiment. The seventh point is the lunar eclipse. The shadow cast by the earth on the moon during a lunar eclipse is always circular. This proves that the shape of the earth is spherical. The last reason to believe the shape of the earth is spherical is by the aerial photographs. The aerial photographs of earth sent by artificial satellites and various spacecrafts clearly show the curvature of the earth's surface. Picture of the earth taken from the surface of the moon by the astronaut clearly proves that the city of the earth. So here we are coming to the end of the chapter and the last topic to be discussed is earth is the home of humankind and conditions that exist there. Here we are going to discuss a few points namely the distribution of land and water, earth the only planet with life on it and different cycles which occur on earth and the conditions that are favorable to life on earth. The first point to be discussed is 
distribution of land and water do you know that the earth is called a blue planet because it is the only planet where there is more than twice as much water which is 71% as land that is 29% thus the distribution of land and water is uneven whereas in the northern hemisphere the areas of land and water are nearly equal but in the southern hemisphere there is nearly 15 times as much water as land there are a number of outstanding points concerning the distribution of land and water such as there is an antipodal arrangement of land and water on directly opposite side of the earth if there is land on one part of the globe then there is water in the, on the opposite side of it even the north polar ocean is opposite to the antarctic landmass the greatest landmasses form an almost complete girdle in the northern hemisphere the landmasses are narrowest in the southern hemisphere and the antarctic landmass has three protruding areas one extending towards the south america a second towards south africa and a third towards australia the second point to be discussed is biosphere the home of the human kind biosphere is a sphere of life which spreads over all the other three spheres biosphere supplies the essential requisites of life for all the species living on earth likely light heat water food and living space or habitats biosphere or the ecosystem as it is called in an evolutionary system it represents a stable equilibrium of various physical and biological factors which have been operating in the past air water men animals plants plantations soil and bacteria are all invisibly interlinked in a life sustaining system called the environment all the living organisms microbes plants animals and man have survived by adjusting themselves to the environment it is therefore absolutely necessary that a balance is maintained among the different cycles like energy cycle heat cycle carbon cycle nitrogen cycle oxygen cycle and water cycle on which our environment depends now let's have a look in the different systems that govern the physical and the biological elements of the earth let's begin with nitrogen cycle earth's atmosphere contains 78% nitrogen it is very essential for plant growth lack of nitrogen can cause serious damage to crop production nitrogen is absorbed by the soil and plant for their growth it is released in the atmosphere by the decomposition of dead animals in the form of ammonia thus the cycle of nitrogen is maintained after that we have the heat cycle heat is one of the prime requirements of life this is supplied by solar radiation on the whole the earth receives only 45% of the solar energy that reaches the ground 15% is absorbed by the atmosphere and 40% is reflected back into the space next is line is the oxygen cycle oxygen not only supports life but also helps a great deal in maintaining ecological balance man inhales oxygen and exhales carbon dioxide which is taken in by the plants thus it is a very important to conserve our forest cover to sustain life on earth the last and the most important cycle to be discussed is the water cycle water plays a versatile role in the functioning of the biosphere it is essential for all life forms of plant animal and man the water cycle of the biosphere depends on the reciprocity of evaporation and precipitation 
our planet consists of 71% water and 29% land. Water on Earth goes into the atmosphere as vapor by evaporation and transpiration of the plants. The vapor is returned to Earth as rain or snow. Here we have to discuss another uh, aspect that is the solar energy. The solar energy is the most important for all ecological balance. The process by which solar energy is transferred to molecules is called photochemical process. One of the most important photochemical activities in the biosphere is photosynthesis by which plants absorb carbon dioxide and give out oxygen. The last point of this topic is the conditions favorable to life on earth. The most remarkable feature of earth is that life exists only on this planet because firstly our earth is the third planet with respect to its distance from the sun. It is neither too close like Mercury and Venus nor too far like Uranus and Neptune. Hence, it receives just the right amount of heat necessary for life. The second point is, although other planets have atmospheres, they are either too thin or too dense and full of poisonous gases, thus making it impossible for life to exist. On the other hand, Earth's atmosphere extending up to around 1600 km contains adequate amount of oxygen that is 21% nitrogen which is 78% along with a small amount of other gases like hydrogen, helium and ozone. It acts as a blanket protecting us from the harmful ultraviolet rays of the sun and retains the heat radiated from the earth's surface. The last point to be dealt here is besides its favorable conditions earth's water cycle is the most unique feature. Life cannot exist without water.